Welcome back. Uh, let's talk now about multi-tenant registration and deployment. So multi-tenant in LTI 1.3 is actually a simple concept. It's a decoupling of the registration of a tool from its actual deployment, that is when it is being made available for users. This means that you can register a tool once, and then that tool can be deployed any numbers of time. Each deployment here is that what we would refer as a tenant, so usually an organization that decides to make the tool available to its users. In short, we have one registration, multiple deployments. That's what we, is meant here by multi-tenant. So the registration is a heavy lifting. That's where you exchange the OpenID and OAuth 2 configuration and also the LTI configuration, such as the endpoints for deep linking, which services would be required, and so on. The so deployment on, its, on the other side is fairly lightweight. It's only when the tool decides to pick up that tool and activate it for its users. And when a deployment is made, there is a deployment ID that is minted by the learning platform to identify this deployment. So let's have a look uh, with a fictional example of how this could be put in practice. So here we imagine a learning platform called roslinlms.com. So Roslin LMS is a popular LMS in the, in the cloud. It's a SaaS platform and has many customers. One of them is Caprica U, a prominent university with thousands of students and hundreds of classes. Then there is a well-known publisher called Cobalt 12, which offers various content and course activities. That publisher is well established and often used by Roslin LMS customers. To make it easy, Cobalt 2 will register once with Roslin LMS a learning platform. From Cobalt 12, uh, that registration is uniquely identified by the issuer, so that is here uh, would be cobaltlms.com, and the OAuth 2 client ID that Cobalt LMS uh, created when it registered um, Cobalt 12. So that's the OAuth 2 client ID. So it's important to understand that once the registration is done, then nobody is still using the tool. The tool has not been made available to anybody. Then now Caprica U decides to purchase access to Cobalt 12. So Cobalt 12 being already configured, the administrator just needs to turn it on. Turning it on, the administrator may have also a choice to do some additional configuration or additional restrictions to, the, for the, for, um, to that tool. But that is not required. So when it is deployed, Rosin LMS will issue a unique deployment ID identifying this deployment. This deployment ID is platform generated and cannot be modified. It identifies that deployment of, the, of that tool in this platform. So this deployment ID will be included in each and every LTI message is going to COBOL 12. Now COBOL 12 will bind that deployment ID to its Caprica U account. So it is up to the tool to decide how the, to handle the bonding between the deployment ID and an account. For example, COBOL 12 could discover the unknown deployment ID on the first launch and prompt the user for reconciliation by asking the account owner to log in in COBOL 12 to finalize the deployment. But all of this is a one-time action. Uh, all subsequent launches, COBOL 12 will recognize the deployment ID as being attached to its Caprica U account. So this was an example of a multi-tenant scenario. So what about single tenant? Well, single tenant is just a special case of a multi-tenant where a tool will only have a single deployment for a given issuer and client ID. That is, a single deployment for a given registration. So this happens, for example, when the registration is done at the organization level, not at the planning platform level. And this will also be the de facto case for organization managing their own LMSs or the standalone version of the LMS. So let's see in our example how that would work. And so in this example, Caprica U would like to use a simulation called Viper Blast. Viper Blast has not been registered with Rosin LMS as a learning, uh, learning platform. However, Viper Blast will be registered directly with Caprica U. So the issuers that Viper Blast will receive will be capricau.edu, not rosinlms.com. And the OAuth 2 client ID will also be generated and will be scoped to the capricau.edu issuer. A deployment ID will also be generated at the same time because here the registration and the deployment happen at the same time. But there will only ever, never be two deployments for that OAuth 2 client ID. I mean, that means there will never be two deployments for that registration. So that's for the single tenant case. Now that's all good, but deployment ID is purely an LTI concept. So how does it fit with the OAuth 2 and OpenID? So here, the first thing is that um, deployment ID will always be included in all the ID tokens originating from the learning platform. But sometimes you need to get this information earlier into the authentication request flow when the initial request for login is sent by the learning platform. 
And in that case, the OAuth 2 specification does not uh, specify to even pass a client ID. So you don't get neither the client ID or the deployment ID into the uh, login request. And this usually is not an issue because this information will be present in the ID token. However, in some cases, a tool might need to want to select a different Regibike URI based on the client ID, in which case you could use the fact that um, OAuth 2 lets you specify a login URI to basically sneak into the login URI a client identifier of your choice so that you can pick up the actual um, client on your site based on the marker you put in the login URI. Well, but that will still not address the actual uh, need for to know the deployment ID. So this is why LTI allows for the third party login to include both the client ID and the deployment ID. However, this is an extension to the OpenID third party login flow and therefore the support may not be available uh, on all learning platforms. So that's something you would have to check if you could get access uh, to that data if you need it on the learning platform you intend to integrate with. As for services, uh, the deployment is implied by the resource you try to access. That means, for example, if you try to access a context roster, well, that context will be served under a given deployment. So you can imply the deployment from the fact that you're trying to address a given context. And that goes for the other resources you may try, your tool may, try, may want to reach. So I hope this clarifies things around multi-tenant and so happy multi-tenanting. Thank you.